All right, your second two points out of 10 is gonna come from the structure of your essay. Um, so in the A range, your introduction paragraph will have a specific thesis. So it will have all three parts. Uh, it will be specifically, uh, I'm sorry, my cat. It will be specifically stated with clear vocabulary. Um, and you'll have an outline of your entire argument. So in the introduction, you'll give us uh, maybe a little bit of context and background. You'll um, open up your thesis, which is like your main big idea, and then you'll break it down um, into the an overview of like the subtopics that you're gonna cover. So the body paragraph topics and the um, analytic claims. So that's an, that's an outline of your argument, and we will go into that in more detail when we do our argument workshop. Um, but for now, the introduction in the A range will have a clear and specific thesis and a clear outline of your entire argument. Um, in the B range, your thesis might not be super specific or your argument outline might not be complete. Um, in the C range, it's vague, and in the D range, um, it's like unclear what your thesis is, or you're missing a thesis, or you're missing an argument overview. Uh, number two, this is for the body structure. Um, focused paragraphs are effectively organized with a logical structure, and I'll suggest a logical structure when it comes to time to outline your argument, but um, focused paragraphs is key here. Each paragraph needs to be making and supporting a claim that develops your thesis. Um, so when you make that claim, only talk about evidence that's relevant to that claim. When you present evidence, only analyze and interpret the pieces of that evidence that are supporting the claim that you're making. So um, your body paragraphs should be focused in that way. No distracting details. Um, and then the logical structure. So um, for this essay, uh, logical structure is um, like the most prominent rhetorical technique um, and then through to the least prominent or like the most outrageous semiological association or even maybe like the most benign semiological association and then you can build up and crescendo into, um, you know, semiological associations that might seem to be more and more manipulative so in that way, the logical structure is that like you're building up, you're building the um, intensity of your paper. Um, number three, so creative and effective transitions. So you will be transitioning not only from paragraph to paragraph. Um, I tried to point out in the Dissocer and in the Welby overviews, I tried to point out some good examples of transitions. Um, but basically you're saying, okay, we've been talking about this. Now we're going to start talking about something else. Um, so you can do it, you know, sort of creatively, or you can do it, um, like simply and effectively, which is just like what I said in my example, like, uh, we were talking about this and now we will talk about this or next let's talk about this or also we have that, or on the other hand, we can look at this. Um, so those are simple and effective um, transitions. Um, and then you also, you'll have transitions from paragraph to paragraph, but you'll also have those transitions that are like, um, I was talking about this piece of evidence and now I'm talking about the next piece. And those are great, um, great places in your paper where you can use those um, coordinating and subordinating conjunction words to really explicitly detail the logical connection, the pattern between um, your own ideas. So are you talking about a contrast? Are you adding something more to the topic you're already talking about? Um, are you looking at a cause at the beginning and then a result or an effect at the end of the paragraph? Um, so, so try and use those words to really explicitly state the reasoning behind your thought. And then the last element on structure is for your conclusion. Very um, sort of uh, 
makes you think of the introduction. It's, it's very similar. Um, conclude with a full summary of your argument and a unique clarification of your thesis. So um, the basic conclusion will pretty much just repeat the introduction, maybe like in the opposite order. Um, but a really great um, conclusion will have a unique clarification of the thesis. So um, building that thesis even more dramatically, um, explaining your significance more clearly and using specific examples, um, leaving the audience with some final remarks like uh, a call to action you might have heard of where you, um, you might be addressing consumers or marketing people and you're telling them, you know, based on all of this analysis I've done, this is what you should do when you're either viewing advertisements or creating advertisements. Um, so some final advice or a final warning. Um, so something like a zinger to leave them with. All right, if you have any questions about the structure grade that you'll receive on your paper, if you want clarification on maybe the distinctions between A, B, C, D, um, just have a reply below and I will do my best to answer it for you.